pressure alleviate the pain. No ibuprofen, I'm proving you can't escape the rain. I came with a sword, divide the righteous poor from the wicked elites. The serpents under my feet. Some sell they sell for a fleet just to lose it all in the week. The inheritance for some stew, a taste of the devil's brew. I've learned I never lose recruit. Then I return, if that's whatever I earn. Stand firm as the world turns. You watch, I'm in the cut. You a clown living it up, panhandling with a cup with some shoes and jewelry shoes. You are selling for a habit. I'm masterminding the move. The destination I choose is worth a brick in the bruise. Couple of sleepless nights of prayer before the dawn. No father left in my world, no mother to lean on. people it's your brother yacht cool woodrow whichever one is easiest back again to talk to y'all a little bit for the first time in the new year by this roman calendar but as we know and if you follow me on social media you definitely know that the real new year is when everything is fresh and new not dead like it is right now in the dead of winter but that's another talk for another day like I said, you found me on social media. We are reading, talking about it. So let's get into some of this book. I get a lot of talk these days about people, from people, about being a high value man or a high value female or high value person, however they might put it. But let's look in this book and see what the true meaning of high value is. How can we be high value to the most high? Let's get into it. Gonna start off with the book of Sirach or Ecclesiasticus and start off at chapter 10 verses 19 through 25. It says, They that fear Yah are a sure seed, and they that love him an honorable plant. They that regard not the law are a dishonorable seed. And they that transgress the commandments are a deceivable seed. And in Proverbs 14 and 6, it says, Knowledge is easy unto him that understandeth. And what is it that they understand? Understand the Most High. And that's given in Jeremiah 9 and 24. You can look into them verses when we get off of here. And Proverbs 9 and 10 backs that up. It says, The fear of Yahuwah is the beginning of wisdom. So fearing him understanding him that's the real knowledge and wisdom that we need okay back into verse 20 among brethren he that is chief is honorable so all they that fear yahuwah in his eyes the fear of yahuwah goeth before the obtaining of authority but pride and roughness is the losing thereof and we can look at proverbs 16 and 18 to back that up says whether he be rich noble or poor their glory is in the fear of yahuwah it is not meet to despise the poor man to have understanding 
neither is it convenient to magnify a sinful man. Great men and judges and potentates shall be honored, yet there is none of them greater than he that feareth Yahuwah. That's real high value. Ain't nobody greater than he that fears the Most High. Unto the servant that is wise shall they that are free do service, and he that have knowledge will not grudge when he is reformed. Now let's get the same verses out of the Good News, Trusty Good News Translation. So we make sure we all on the same page. It says, they title it, People Who Should Be Honored. 19. Who deserves honor? The human race does, because people fear Yahuwah. Who deserves, who does not deserve honor? The human race does not, because people break Yahuwah's commands. So we got some people that should be honored. We got some that shouldn't. Just like um, in the book of 2 Timothy, verse chapter 2, verse 20, it says some vessels were made to honor and some to dishonor. So it's basically just backing up that same verse. It says, verse 20 says, a leader should be honored by those who follow him. And Yahuwah honors those who fear him. Some manuscripts add verse 21. Success begins with the fear of Yahuwah. But failure begins with stubbornness and arrogance. And I find it funny where it says pride and roughness in the um, in the Good News Translation. Because like when you talk to some of your elders, like I got a favorite elder that I like to talk to sometimes. And he's telling me one day he was out somewhere in public. And he's like, green, them niggas was rough. So it's just like go right back to that pride and roughness. And when you look at it in this translation, the same word for pride and roughness, it says stubbornness and arrogance. And we definitely see a lot of that in our people nowadays. This says, 22 says, rich people, famous people, and poor people all take pride in the fear of Yahuwah. It is not right to refuse honor to a poor person who is intelligent, and it is not right to give honor to a sinner. But that's just the opposite of what people do nowadays. They don't want to hear nothing from nobody who's poor. Whether they smart, stupid, whatever, they don't want to hear from them. But as soon as somebody rich is talking, it don't matter. Like, it could be as wicked as all outdoors, but as long as they got some type of material stuff to show off, then everybody's all ears. It's, it's other verses that talk about that that we read before in some of our studies. Some of our talks that we done had on here. Um, Wisdom 12 and 6 says, The Most High hates sinners. So regardless of what people try to say, Oh, the Lord loved the sinner, but he hates the sin. It say right here in plain writing, The Most High hateth sinners. So I'd rather bank on what the word of the Most High say than what any person tell me, regardless of how pretty his robe might be or how much money he might bring in or how big his congregation Let's get more into studying what this word is saying, believing that over people. Um, verse 24 says, People of influence, rulers, and judges will be honored, but none of them is greater than a person that fears Yahuwah, the Most High. A slave who is wise will have free citizens serving him, and if they are sensible, they will not resent it. A man know what he talk about, but listen to him. This is Sirach Ecclesiasticus 10 and 26 through 11 and 6. Be not overwise in doing thy business, and boast not thyself in the time of thy distress. Better is he that laboreth and aboundeth in all things than he that boasteth himself and one of bread. Like basically cabin. Like you pumping yourself up saying you somebody, saying you got this and that, but then as soon as you get away from the people you was capping for you you begging for bread and i didn't seen that happen personally in real life like i never call out any individuals but i done had people post like large sums of money online and i pretty much like the the post because i'm like i'm happy to see my brother or my sister doing good and then as soon as i know sooner than i like the post i get an inbox like yo can i borrow like 20 dollars till next week I'm like yo what happened to all that money that you just posted up online they like, oh boy, that was rent money, or oh boy, that was this, or that was that. So you know what I'm saying? So it's better to have what you need and be quiet about it than to be boasting on something that you don't even have and the reality is that you still 
begging and 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 basically struggling, you know. So that's just a little verse against capping. It says, "Better." Oh, we just read that one. It's twenty-eight. My son, glorify thy soul in meekness, humility, and give it honor according to the dignity thereof. Who will justify him that sinneth against his own soul, and who will honor him that dishonoreth his own life? The poor man is honored for his skill, and the rich man is honored for his riches. He that is honored in poverty, how much more in riches? And he that is dishonorable in riches, how much more in poverty? This is chapter 11. Verse 1 says, Wisdom lifteth up the head of him that is of low degree, and maketh him to sit among great men. Commend not a man for his beauty. Neither abhor a man for his outward appearance. The bee is little among such as fly, but her fruit is the chief of sweet things. Boast not thyself of clothing and raiment, and exalt not thyself in the day of honor. For the works of Yahuwah are wonderful, and his works among men are hidden. Many kings have sat down upon the ground, and one that have never thought of have worn the crown. Many mighty men have been greatly disgraced, and the honorable delivered into other men's hands. Now, Good News Translation puts it like this. The title of it in there is Humility and Self-Respect. When you do your work, don't make a show of your skill. And don't try to put on a show when you are in trouble. That's the one we just touched on about Kevin and flexing, you know, like a lot of people do. It is better to work and have more than you need than to go around boasting but hungry. We just talked about that. My child, keep your self-respect but remain modest. Value yourself at your true worth. Like, don't look at yourself above what you are, but at the same time, don't look at yourself as below what you are. Even value yourself exactly as you are. There is no excuse for a person to run himself down. No one respects a person who has no respect for himself. And that's the truth. Because so many times, like, you put yourself down in what they call a self-depreciating humor and stuff like that. And a lot of times you thinking that somebody going to be like, oh, no, you're not like that. Like somebody might post a selfie of themselves and then the, the caption would be like ugly, ugly yo or something like that. And then you think that people is going to, you know, are going to encourage you and lift you up when you do stuff like that. But then some people that might have thought that you was handsome. But then once you pointed out, they were like, now that he mentioned it, his nose is a little bit crooked. Well, I don't like the way how his, you know what I'm saying, this go or that go. So it's like, don't put yourself down because you're basically feeding ideas to the enemy, how they can bring you down, pointing out your flaws. Like, I remember, I think it was Method Man one time that was like, Superman's biggest mistake was letting somebody know that he was, his weakness was kryptonite. Because once somebody knew that, they knew how to come at him and use it against him. So basically, don't go around putting yourself down. I, I remember I had a homeboy. I'm not, once again, I'm not going to say names, but this person, like, to me coming up, I'm looking at this guy like, man, shoot, if I look like this guy, I'd probably get all the girls. And this guy was sitting there, like, when you talked to him, he was just like, oh, my goodness, I'm so ugly, I'm so this, and I'm so that, I'm so corny, and all that. And as a result, I never really seen no girls around him. And here we are in our older age, and he's learned more. We all lived and learned. And now he can't fight them off of him, <laughs> you know, and I don't hear him talking none of that talk no more. So what they say, as a man think of, therefore he is, you know, so he thought that and that's that people that that's what he attracted. But now that he have a different mindset, like I say, he can't fight them off. He, he living. And I'm glad I love to see it, as people say nowadays, you love to see it. Um, Let's get back into this word, though. It says poor people can be honored for their good sense. And rich people can be honored for their wealth. Psalm 49 and 18 says, Men will praise thee when thou doest well for thyself. And so it's basically saying there's something for everybody to feel good about in itself. One of my favorite shows back in the day, theme song went like this. Everybody's got a special kind of story. Everybody finds a way to shine. It don't matter that you got 
la da la So what? They had theirs, you had yours, and I had mine. And together we'll be fine, because it takes the first dose to move the world. Yes, it does. It takes the first dose to move the world. Do, do, do. Mm. So wherever you find yourself at, it's something that you can feel good about. And it's something that you can find strength in to help yourself to push forward. And above all those things, you can find strength in the most high, you know. And this is um, verse 31. If someone is honored while he is poor, think about how much he will be honored if he becomes rich. So, like, if people already rock with you and you ain't have nothing or you ain't have much, imagine how much more they're going to rock with you when you do have some success to show or something that they consider as success, riches or whatever. And this is what people fear who is on the wicked side, this next part of this. If someone is despised while he is rich, if people already don't like you and you you rich and you already doing it or what these people consider to be doing it, doing your thing, it said, think how much more he will be despised if he becomes poor. Like sometimes when you treat people bad, like they can't wait for you to fall off. Like they just sit there and wait for the day that you fall off because of the way that you treated them. They already got plotted out in their mind what they'd do if they was to see this person and they was on the same playing field, the same level as them, like without security or bodyguards or whatever the case may be. See what I'm saying? So that's what a lot of people fear and that's what keep a lot of people probably on the edge of their bed and can't sleep at night because they know how they treated people when they did have success. So they just wonder how it will be if it wasn't like that. Like I'll give you an example. My dad was a um, correction officer. And a lot of times, a lot of the students, he was at a, a juvenile detention center. So, like, a lot of the inmates, we would run into them, like, in our everyday walks, like, going to the store or at the gas station or something. And we'd just hear, Mr. Green, Mr. Green. And he'd turn around. But because of the way that he treated them while they were on the inside, and they were basically subordinate to him, like, he was their um, superior. He told them what to do or whatever. Because of the way he carried it, whipped them on the inside, they show him love when they got outside. Whereas though it was other people that they would call by name. I was too young to remember any of their names. And if I did remember, I wouldn't say them. But they would like, man, I can't wait to run into such and such out here. Because he did this to me. He treated me this way. Or he, you know what I'm saying, tried to holler at my mother in front of my face or whatever while I was in here. Or whatever, Just blatant disrespectful stuff, you know. And it's like, so when the playing field is even. People be having plotted out now, whether or not it ever happens or whether or not they run into them people, I guess that's up to the most high. But the point of it is treat people good no matter what level that you on, so that if people do see you on the same playing field as them or equal ways though there's nobody to keep y'all apart from each other, then you might get embraced instead of embraced in belly to belly suplex. <laughs> so let's go on says let's read that again out of here if someone is honored while he is poor think how much he will be honored if he becomes rich if someone is despised while he is rich think how much more he will be despised if he becomes poor he's not people say when you rich people are like oh it's the um a uh, clip that i saw that my brother dane judah sent me and it's a match.com commercial and it's like the devil and a girl, the girl was named 2020. So it was like the the blender, the year 2020 and the devil or whatever. But like it was one part where as though she said 2020 was like, oh, he's not that bad. At least he's famous. And that's how it be. Like people put up with a lot of crap off of somebody if they famous or rich or whatever that they wouldn't put up with somebody if they didn't have them things. So sometimes that's some people only save a grace is that they are rich or famous. So. They not rich or famous. They in trouble. And they ain't got nothing coming. <laughs> so, take in mind that part on the flip side, too, of what you put up with from people. Don't just put up with something from somebody because they are rich or famous. Value what my, Dr. Martin Luther King said. Value somebody on the content of their character. And you never go wrong because if they do happen to lose them riches or for us guys, we more value like a lady for... Her beauty, so like if she get to an age where she do lose that beauty, but she's still a sweet human being and she's still pleasurable to be around, she might have more of a chance that somebody might want to be around her. Whereas though before, 
if the only reason why you was tolerating her is because of the way that she looked or how beautiful she was, if something happened and she don't have that no more, then what's she going to have? Like my mom used to always say, you're born and not buried. So anything that you have that make you think make you better than anybody or think make you be able to treat other people any kind of way because you have this, any of that could be taken away in a blink of an eye. So the most important thing you can invest into and build up is your character. And of course, your walk with the most high and your spirit, because those are things that are so easily taken away. But anything physical and visual or tangible, we can lose. So that's not the main stuff to build your whole thing on. This is verse Hmm. It says, if a person is wise, he has good reason to be proud and he will be thought of as someone great. This is appearances. Do not compliment a person on his good looks. On the other hand, do not look down on someone who is unattractive. Just said that, but here it is out of the word. It says, compared to most flying things, a bee is very small, but the honey it makes is the sweetest of foods. And once again, the bee is little, but he makes good stuff. When I was a little boy, they had a, um, my mom got me this, um, well, my mom and dad got me this thing called the CNSA, and you could listen to records and read the book along with it. You see what's in the book, and then the record is saying the same things, and it had little songs, and one of them was Tom Thumb, and he sung a song called Good Things Come in Small Packages, and that scripture about the bee made me think of that. Here go something for everybody to grow on. Don't make fun of someone who has fallen on hard times and is dressed in rags. And in Greek, it says, don't take pride in fine clothes and don't let compliments go to your head. You just said that. It says, if you live off a of man's compliments, you die from his criticism. That's a famous quote that I have a meme I post every once in a while on my social media. Yahuwah does wonderful things that human beings never notice. And that's the truth for real right there. Proverbs said, it is the glory of Yahuwah to conceal a thing, but it is the honor of kings is to search out a matter. The good, good um, God word translation said, it is the glory of Elohim, the most high, to hide things, but the glory of kings is to investigate them. Like that's the wise people that can find the hidden things and things that somebody brings up out and the first thing people say is like, wow, that's deep. Oh, wow, I never thought of that. Because the most high hit certain things and he give it to certain people to be able to bring those things out. And that's the people that we we love to listen to because they found something that was hidden that everybody wasn't so obvious. Everybody didn't know. And sometimes it do be right under your nose, right under the tip of your tongue, but it just takes somebody else to point it out to you for real. This is the Good News Translation. It says, we honor the Most High for what he conceals or hides. We honor kings for what they can explain. They make it plain to us. The things that were hidden, the things that were, you know, like deep that we couldn't figure out. It's that person or those people who can figure it out and point it out to us. That's people that we should listen to for real. It says, many are the kings who have ended their careers sitting on the ground while their crowns were worn by those no one had ever heard of before. And that's the truth. I remember when I was doing my old job of entertainment and there was a guy who was around us who used to always say, y'all got to keep working hard because the next y'all is somewhere in the basement working hard right now while y'all sleeping. And they will take your spot gladly. And that's what it say. Many of the kings that have ended their careers sitting on the ground while one that was never heard of before is wearing their crown. Somebody, the ones that was in the basement working or whatever they was doing, they wear the crown while the ones who thought they was on top and got too comfortable or got too complacent or got disrespectful to the most high, which is the way that a lot of people really lose their crown, that pride and roughness that we was just looking at. They lose their crown and then somebody else come right up and like, oh, I take that, thank you. <laughs> See, many of uh, the famous people who have fallen into the power of others. Now let's go to the New Testament for a quick little minute. This is um, Luke chapter 12 and verse 15. And I'm going to pull that up and read it for y'all right here. That's the beauty of having the Wi-Fi. 
I can use my other device and I can pull that one up really quickly. If y'all bear with me for one second, please, and I thank you. This is Luke 12 and 15. And we're going to get it from the King James Version and then we're going to go and look at what other one we want to bring out. It says, And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of things which he possesseth. Possesseth. I, I can't say that word. <clears throat> but look, P-O-S-S-E-S-S-E-T-H. This is the New Living Translation. Then he said, Beware, guard against every kind of greed. Life is not measured by how much you own. That's saying it real plain. And then one last scripture, also in the book of Luke. Excuse me. This is Luke chapter 16 and verse 5. And we're going to get that from the King James once again. Hold on. Made a mistake. Made a mistake. Okay, here we go. That wasn't the right one. Let me see if it's 15. But once again, like saying on that, like people, so many people who will value what somebody is worth by what they have. When we see by these scriptures, that's not what make you high value at all. You see what I'm saying? This is what makes you high value. And the opposite of the other things that everybody think is good. And I see this is one of my favorites. I know I brought it up before. I know I brought the other one up before too because I had a problem pronouncing it then too. But y'all get it. This is Luke chapter 16 verse 15. And he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourselves before men. But the Most High knoweth your hearts. For that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of the Most High. And let's get it from the Good News Translation. The, the Messiah said to them, You are the ones who make yourself look right in other people's sight. But the Most High knows your heart. For the things that are considered of great value by people are worth nothing in the Most High's sight. So you have everything in this world and you can look great to all the people in the world and everybody co-signing you. But when it come that day when we got to stand before the one that made us all, if you ain't got the things that he values and you don't have the things that he's saying that we should have and, and what make us of high value, this high value on this side don't mean nothing. Nothing, 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 nothing. Let me, let me get you one more. I wasn't planning on getting this one. But let me pull this one out real quick. This is Jeremiah chapter 9 verse 24 and then we're going to end it on this one it says but let him that glory glory in this that he understandeth and knoweth me that i am yahuwah which exercise loving kindness judgment and righteousness in the earth for in these things i delight saith yahuwah the most high and let me get it for you out of a plainer translation real quick this is the New Living Translation. It says, But those who wish to boast should boast in this alone, that they truly know me and understand that I am Yahuwah, which demonstrates unfailing love, and who brings justice and righteousness to the earth, and that I delight in these things. I, Yahuwah, the Most High, have spoken. So that's what makes you true value, and really high value, that you understand the Most High, and that he demonstrates unfailing love, brings justice and righteousness to the earth, and delight in these things, and keep his commandments, that'll make you high value. Not no whole bunch of money, not where you live, not what car you drive, not how many females you got if you're a guy, or how many guys you got on your OnlyFans if you're a female, you know? So we just need to throw out a lot of ideas of what makes somebody worth whatever, or what makes you worth as a person and get the values and principles that this book tells us makes us high value and I thought this was going to be longer than what it was but that's all I got so most high bless and keep y'all may he shine upon each and every one of us and be his will we'll see each other again soon shalom